Hey everybody, this is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World Electronics. I am working with th some Nito robot vacuum batteries that I bought from Battery Hookup a while back. I actually have more on the way. But I've got some, um, these are 14.6 volts. I have the specs here actually, there's a cover. 14.4 volts and 4200 milliamp hours, so 4.2 amp hours. Not bad. Now, these are all shipped in a sleeping state, so I have to bypass the BMS circuit, which is inside, to wake up the battery packs. And after much experimentation and studying of how this is all put together, I realize these four, well that's an actual ground, these three wires are not hooked to anything that I can recognize here um, that I can use. There's two grounds, there's a ground, there's a ground, and there's a plus. Now, when I open one of these, over here there is an external connection to a ground and a, and a positive which is good for waking them up. So what I've got is I've got a battery here I just started and I cut off the plus and minus wires and I got them here accessible but the positive, the thin positive wire that comes out to this lead is disconnected by the BMS because the, the cells are at two volts apiece which is really low you can't you can't wake them up through the BMS that way. So what I've done is go directly to the the one lead I just mentioned. It's on the battery cells themselves, and the ground is connected to the same um, the ground on the back of the cells. So that's a common ground, and I got some power going into this until I get up to I'm gonna probably go for well I'm at 12 already this one's taking up a voltage pretty quick it's going up pretty fast I'm only at a hundred milliamps very gentle charge so these are um, parallel sets so what is that 50 milliamps per cell really low really gentle I'm gonna let that absorb for a while and uh, then I'm going to go to the other lead, which came out to here, to this clip. And then I'm going to finish the charge like you normally would. And in my experimentation with this cell, I have found that once you've got the batteries woken up, then you can close it all back up. I'll probably disconnect all these wires later off the BMS. And... I'm pressing this down in here. I'm probably going to put a shot of hot glue in here, neatly wrap that in, route this negative wire out this way, where they originally were. Um, you can see on this one, they route through to this connector and go into the vacuum. And I'm going to cut all these off. Got the positive going this way because it's right next to this main hot terminal. And the negative going out this way. And then I can close that back up. And I've got a usable battery pack at... Uh, 14 point what was that four volts and 4.2 amp hours and these I'm going to put on a big board in parallel and build myself a off-grid battery system in my garage to power my entire workshop so looking good now again um, batteryhookup.com we'll put the link down below and if you use the code DIY tube all caps you save 5% on your purchase. And that adds up. That does add up. So uh, you guys can check that out. I'm noticing full capacity when I charge them up. The, these I've had for quite a few months. And they hold their voltage well. They're very, very stable. Once you've charged them up, they hold the voltage. And they don't, they don't self-discharge. All the cells stay the same. They're pretty well balanced. And uh, they're looking really good. All right, so here's one of the Neato um, vacuum robot batteries as it comes. 
out of the box. I bought um, 21 of these, I think, a while back. I got 25 more on the way. So it's going to make a nice um, power wall when I'm done. So at 4 point, I'm going to have to get, get a calculator here, 4.2 amp hours, I'll be right back. I'll have 193 amp hours of battery capacity uh, if I used them at their fullest total capacity, which I'm not going to do. So I'm probably going to have about a 50, 100, 150 amp hours, 130 to 150 amp hours of capacity with my own limitations I'm putting in place to extend the life of the batteries. I am learning and studying how to improve the life cycle of your batteries, your lithium ion batteries. And I've got a lot of experiments I want to share with you in the future on those lines. So anyway, I just cut off this sheet, this protective wrap, heat shrink. And now I've got the cell as you see them. And then I've got some tape on here. Oh, this one's not taped. How funny is that? Some of these are taped, some are not. These pop open. Of course, on camera, it's not going to work as easy. That pops open, exposing the circuit board. And then I work out these wires. Now, whatever battery, here's a piece of tape to cut. Whatever battery you get is going to be a little different, but I like to keep my 18650 cells intact um, so that they're already held together, already welded together, soldered, welded, or whatever. Um, here are some modem battery packs that I'm keeping intact just like that. And I'll probably add some uh, hot glue along the seams to help maintain their form. And um, on these, I'm gonna cut off the um, BMS circuits because I have no idea what's what on these. And I'll make my own uh, control circuitry. But all the wires are there, which is greatly convenient. And two of these equals one of these. So. That is just for absolute convenience. I don't have to... A lot of people will take all these apart, t tear out every single cell, test them all individually on the table, and then re-solder and re-weld or whatever, and make a battery pack. Well, here's already a battery pack half that's half of a pack for me. So, um, uh, putting together 14-volt batteries, I just need two of these, and there you go. It's just so much less work. Here, already done. As long as all the cells test out good, and all the wires come out to here, so I can check. I can check that out. It's all convenient. You don't have to go through all that extra work ripping them apart farther. I prefer not to. So now I'm going to carefully cut these off one at a time. Watch me explode right here on video. I only want the first three wires off. Because really what I want is just the positive and the negative, that black wire. And snip that. And that's just on these particular battery packs. But the point of what I'm getting at here is that you don't have to break it down all the way. If you can figure out which wires are which, your plus and your minus, and use them as is and save yourself a lot of work now these are all discharged down to like two volts a cell and are in a sleep mode so there's no connection whoops <laughs> there you go i was just saying there's no connection between those two right now there's nothing going to happen if they touch together nothing because the circuit has cut off that's probably why these were recycled they sat on the shelf too long they were never cycled the bms cut them off they're in sleep mode. There's no connection to the outside world, right? Um, funny, as I was saying it, I did that. Now, though, once I get these charged, that BMS is going to wake back up. So I take the pus, and I run it right along here where I've already got uh, a, a place for it to run. Perfect. I take the negative. Also, see, they're positive. The, the, the battery positive is here. The BMS positive is here, all right? So I run the plus along the outside is, so if there ever is a short, there's less possibility of any um, pyrotechnics, which we really want to avoid. All right, run that back through there. Now the negative is out here and routed away safely. 
And these wires I'll later um, deal with. But I can close this up, get it out of my way. All that's out of my way. Okay. And then I can deal with them later. Now I've got my leads. Now over here, I'm going to show you that, yeah, hopefully there's no connection to the outside world. Now this is a common ground, so I can clip this lead here. That's a common, common ground to the whole battery pack, so that's there. I'll take the positive, and I'm going to put it on here, and nothing's going to happen. Nothing. Oh, wait. Nothing. Okay, I thought for a minute there I did have something going on. I'm like, whoa, that's rare. No. It, very briefly, it puts a surge of power to the board. It wakes up for a fraction of a second and puts it right back to sleep. So this battery, the BMS has put these batteries to sleep because they're under, they're about two volts a cell. And all the ones I've tested, they're all about two volts a cell. Now I can go straight to the battery plus, the battery positive terminal right there. And now it's going to take a charge. And I want to go at 100 milliamps. roughly, which gives 50 milliamps a cell until I get up to about 12, 14 volts overall. And then I'll crank that up to 200 uh, milliamps to 100, 100 milliamps a cell. Very, very gentle charge for waking up. Very slow, very gentle, reduces any chance or risk of damage. I see there's a dent on this one. That's something to watch out. Well, that's a bummer. This one may be compromised. Ah, that's a bummer. Well, when you get stuff bulk packed like that, you might have some issues. So I've got to keep an eye on that. I'm going to get a black marker and um, keep a good eye on the heat and thermal characteristics of that battery. As I uh, test it, it's not a deal breaker necessarily from all my studies and experiments. But we'll see. If it shows any weird thermal characteristics, then this will be broken down and another cell will be put in its place. Anyway, this will be a long time in going. I'm going to get another battery going on the other uh, power station. And uh, once it wakes up, then I'll have power out to here again. I've got a second one on, 9.4 volts, 100 milliamps. It was right at, right at 8 volts. These were all resting at 2 volts a cell. And uh, 50 milliamps a cell. This one was absolutely in sleep state, so this wire was isolated from the BMS, was cut off. So I've gone straight to the actual battery positive, bypassing the BMS, common ground. And uh, there it'll sit. This one's up to 12.06. And uh, let them get up there and wake up. And then kick up the amps. And I'll have some more batteries to put in my power wall. I've got four on the floor, three up here, and two more in process. Okay, I've hit 14.4, which is their nominal voltage. I've, uh, I had the current up to 400 milliamps, and I just dropped it down. Once they hit their nominal voltage, I dropped them down to current a little bit further. I don't want to go too much higher above nominal. Now, this one has woken up woke up woken up the okay i was able to move the lead off the battery itself to the bms now i can let the bms take over i'm going to turn that back up a little bit and see what happens i'm just going to experiment with this one at 400 milliamps and if that cuts off on its own then i'm going to know that the bms is working and doing its job this one on the other hand is not yet it's not doing anything the meter does not even show that it's connected so i'm going to leave this one on here to lower current a little bit longer i don't know why on um two of these so far the bms did not come back um maybe it's defective i don't know exactly what's wrong but i'm going to carry on with this one a little bit further this one is has woke up, so that's a good thing. He's good to go. That one's going to be perfectly ready to put into my battery bank. Now this battery, which I've had running through the BMS, has stopped taking a charge suddenly. 0, 0.00 amps at 15.5 volts. Now we're going to check and see if this 
if I disconnect from here and connect it to the battery bypassing the BMS, if it'll still take a charge. If so, that tells me pretty much that the BMS is doing its job and cutting it off at 15 and a half volts. Let me see. Um, oddly, the voltage is lower, but we are taking a charge. 15.1 volts, but it came up to 0 0.42 amps, which is where it was before it cut itself off. So if I take this off here, I bet if I leave that on, that's going to raise a little bit in voltage. It is still charging. If I take this off here and put it back over here, there's no more charge going in. Done. Finished. Cut off at 15.5. Quite interesting. So I'm wondering if that is the cutoff voltage on here, and if it is indeed doing its job. This is an important experiment um, and something I need to know for when I build the final uh, the big battery bank for the power wall. Well, I have another one up here running through the BMS and it's at 15.5 and 0 0.05 amps charge and dropping. So it looks like I'm seeing a pattern and I like the fact that Nido has put a limiting voltage on these cut off at a reduced voltage to extend the life of their battery packs. A lot of battery chargers will charge 18650 cells to 4.0 or 4.2 volts. Most are rated at 4.2 volts, which is way above what I like to do. And that would put us at um, 16 to 16.8. And it looks like these have a lower cutoff, which extends the cycle life of the batteries a lot.